This is the free reduced lunch applications in School Insight webinar. My name is Mike Lencioni. I'm a systems engineer with Common Goal Systems. I'll be your presenter today. Start with a brief agenda. We'll have an introduction. Then we'll talk a little bit about setting up free and reduced lunch applications. Talk about how to enter free reduced lunch applications on the admin side. Then transition to the parent entry where the admins have to review. We'll talk about verifications and then we'll have some time at the end for questions. I wanted to let you know that if at any point when you're using free and reduced lunch applications you can, and you run into an issue or you have questions, you can always contact, contact us at support at 630-592-4200, extension 2, or at support at common-goal.com. Uh, whenever I talk about free and reduced lunch applications, there's always a question as to cost, and I find it important to point out that it is included uh, with School Insight at no additional cost to the school or the parents. Setting it up, uh, there's three steps. First, you got to set up the permissions and determine who is going to actually be handling free and reduced lunch applications, and that's a little different depending on the size of your district. You have to determine whether or not you're going to allow parents to fill out free and reduced lunch applications online, and then you need to do some editing to the letter templates that are preloaded into the system. All right, so with that, we'll go ahead and transition to the site itself. And so right now we're up at the district main page. For some of you that only have one school in your district, you may not have spent a lot of time on this page. The first thing you need to do for free and reduced lunch applications is go to options and then school permissions, and determine if free and reduced lunch applications is gonna be handled at the district level or at the school level. For the purposes of this webinar, we'll be doing them at the school level, but it's important to note that there are very, there's a very little variation between doing it at the district level or the school level. The advantage to doing it at the district level if you have multiple schools in your district is that parents have the ability to fill out one application for students who are at multiple schools. So if a parent has a student at your high school and at your junior high, they can fill out one application for both students if it's managed at the district level. If it's managed at the school level, they would have to fill out an individual application for each student. If you do handle it at the district level, the person handling the free and reduced lunch applications needs to be a district level admin. We'll go ahead and hop down to the schools. And if you run it at the school level, the admin who handles your free and reduced lunch applications needs to have free and reduced lunch application modify privileges, which is the one here on the right, for every school that that admin is in charge of doing free and reduced lunch applications for. Once that's set up, then we can go to our lunch options and edit. And you'll see we have a few choices here when setting up free and reduced lunch applications. It's already hard coded to be at the school because I set that at the district level. You have the option to determine whether or not parents can complete their own applications through the parent portal. I've got that set to yes. And then you have an editable box down here where you can determine what message parents will receive upon completion of the application if you allow them to fill it out online. I've left the default text uh, there for the use of this presentation. We can go ahead and go back to the main and then to letter templates. And this is the last step of the setup process. And you'll see that the system has automatically created a whole list of lunch program letter templates. These are the letters that you can print off or email to parents for all the different scenarios that can happen as part of the free and reduced lunch application process. Each one of these has placeholder text that needs to be edited by an admin at your school. So if we go to edit, and you'll see down here at the bottom, 
I've already edited out and entered in this data. I can show you on the guide, which is a handout to this presentation, what it normally looks like. You'll see here the highlighted fields are how it displays by default and how it will look at your screen. All of those highlighted fields need to be updated with the school's actual information before you can do free reduced lunch applications. That is the final step of the uh, setup process. So we'll go ahead and go back to School Insight. And once all three of those things are done, you've set the permissions and made sure that the person running it has the right permissions. You've determined whether or not it'll be handled online or parents can fill them out online. And you've updated the letter templates. Then you're ready to start accepting free and reduced lunch applications. So we'll go down here under Tools and select that. And we'll start by creating a lunch application for a student as an admin. So if the parent fills it out on paper and turns it in, or if the parent comes in and you fill it out for the parent, this is the process that you would do. So we start by typing in a student's last name and we can select them from the list. And the system will automatically pull the family information for that student based on what's in the system. You have fields here to determine if the student is foster, homeless, migrant, runaway, or part of the Head Start program. And you can determine whether or not each person has income or whether or not they're a student. If there's a family member that's missing, you could add that family member here. Determine if they have income. And then select the school that they're a part of or select that they are not a student. Once you've got the household set up, you can determine the effective date if they are if there is a change in status for the student what date that will become effective and determine who actually completed the application part two gives you the option to determine if the student or anyone in the family participates in snap tnf or fdpir if you select yes then there's some additional information for you to fill out there. And part three becomes uh, invalid or not necessary. If you decide, no, they do not participate in one of these programs, then you'll see that part three fills out with a place for you to enter income for each of the family members you have listed as having income up at the top. You can put in earnings weekly every two weeks, twice monthly, monthly, or annually. The default is monthly, and we'll go ahead and put in a value here. And you'll see that it gives you an annual subtotal for each parent or for each family member that has income, and then an annual total for the household combined. Then on continue, the system is going to calculate the student status based on the information that you've entered. So you'll see it pops up and says that this student is free or their eligibility is free. You then have the ability to either just save or save the application and go to approval. Go ahead and click save and go to approval. And at this point, we're going to pause this student and we're going to hop on over to the parent side and fill out the application from the point of view of the parent. So from the parent main, you can go ahead and go to miscellaneous and free and reduced lunch applications. And again, this is what parents would see if you allowed them to fill it out online. They see the same options that you had on the admin side and they have to enter in the same fields. They have the ability to enter notes if they deem necessary, and they can click continue. Parents are not presented with a calculated, a calculated eligibility. They are, however, presented with a part four, which is a signature, uh, a digital signature 
saying that they've completed the application to the best of their knowledge. They go ahead and enter their name and then they can enter the last four of their social security, which is an optional field. They then click submit and are presented with the text that you set up in the lunch options. You can jump back over to the review screen. So once a, a student or an admin has completed the application for a student, or rather once a parent or admin has completed the application for a student, it will show up in the awaiting review area. So you'll see we have our student here. It has a little bit of information about that student and says that they're awaiting a review. You can click review. The household and application details are listed at the top and the student's current demographic information is listed down at the bottom. You can click update demographic and lunch program information. You'll see it updates both these sets of boxes here. You can mark it. It will automatically be marked approved. You can edit that if you feel you need to. You have the option to verify for cause. And then you can click save and send notifications. When this takes you to the next screen, you can choose to print off the application or email the uh, or email the letter rather to that one parent or to many applicants. And you click preview. And then you can print and log the notification. And the system will automatically pull the correct letter template based on the situation so that you can print it off or email it off to the parent notifying them of their status uh, in the free and reduced lunch application process. You also have the ability to print envelopes and mailing labels from the upper right hand corner. We'll go ahead and we'll go back. And you'll see now that that student is missing from awaiting review. If we select all, you'll see that the student is here. And on 4-5, we sent, we printed an approval letter for that family. The system will track all of your notifications that you ask it to log. So that way, throughout the process, you have the ability to keep track of how many notifications and what part of the process each student is in. We also had the one we filled out online listed here. We can go ahead and click review. We can update demographic and lunch programs and we can verify for cause. So this one will save and send notifications. We'll walk through the same steps. And then we can go back. And you'll see their approval letter has been printed. And they have been selected for verification, but we have not sent the notice yet. So once you have all the students completing their application, you can go ahead and work through the verification process. Click verification. And you'll see here I have a number of students that are verify for cause. I also have the ability to generate a random sample. So anytime after October 1st, but only one time a year, I can select a gener I can tell the system to generate a random sample. It will pull 3% or 3,000 students, whichever is fewer, to be randomly selected for verification, giving priority to error-prone applications. Okay. You see here, it gives me a little breakdown of how many applications I have and how many are already verified for cause and how many applications will be randomly selected. I can go back. And if I had run that, there would be additional applications listed here. When a student is selected for verification, you can click notify. And we can again select a printable letter or an email. We preview and we print and log that notification. Now, if we go back to verifications, you'll see open notified once awaiting response. You can also send notifications to multiple students at the same time using the send notifications button. 
once a student gets back to you or a family gets back to you, you can click verify and you have three options. You can select verified, failed no response, or failed requirements met. You select whichever one you'd like. It automatically updates the lunch program with that information, and then you can send off the notification as part of that process. If you still haven't heard from them, after the first letter, you also have the ability to send a second letter and track that as part of this process. All right, so that sums up kind of the overview of free and reduced lunch applications.